How about 25 subs for a game? You'll gift the subs, win or lose. And considering that I'm pretty much taking challenges right now, that's pretty high energy that user unclear wants to basically just skip the line. Very high T line skip. So you're saying 25 subs to play a game. User unclear. And I just need to play a game. Seems like a uh, very generous offer. User unclear has been uh, has been here. I remember from some of the nights recently, and has definitely been gifting some subs. So <laughs> not at all overall suspicious, but that's a very high energy line skip. You know, I'm here taking challenges, and he's like, "Nah, I'm next." Gotta respect that. Gotta respect that. So what's your username, user unclear? I blocked you. Do you mean on chess.com or on, um, I don't think I block anyone on chess.com. Really? I don't think I've ever blocked someone on chess.com. I have to investigate, eh? User unclear. <laughs> I think I remember this um, account. I'm trying to remember what the context was. How did I end up on your profile? Oh, he challenged with a for a rated game. Ah. That is suspicious, no? <laughs> Wait a minute. That is suspicious. <laughs> so, to be clear, we're not about to play a rated game. <laughs> Just to be clear. With Mr. Unclear. <laughs> so, what's the story with the account then? Because it is strange, no? That you've had the account for almost a year, and you've not played a single game on it, ever. Basically, you never used it. I've never seen someone give up on chess that fast. Like, <laughs> just like seconds, seconds after making the account, like, nah, actually, you know what? Fuck this game. <laughs> I've had enough. I'm out. Here we go. First game ever for user unclear. Ever. Let's see. All right, a Sicilian. This is also um, this is also an account that has been created about a year ago and not a single game played. So as I was saying, he he really gave up on chess quick because it's okay, you know, you can tell by the moves he's making. He definitely knows what he's doing. So I wonder, I wonder what level it is. One of the toughest things in chess to play somebody with zero information you don't know anything about their level what to expect this is also a five plus five game so there's lots of time and lots of increment um but it's just that feeling of uh, the unknown feeling they say in chess playing someone who's unrated is one of the toughest things because you should objectively play the same best strong game against everyone right but I don't think that's uh, something I can say I do. So let's uh, keep a few pieces on the board. A5. So obvious threats here. B5, bishop, b7, I still want to go for it. Yeah, it does feel kind of like a guess the elo when you're playing someone like that. But it's, it's hard to play just like objectively 
good moves without knowing the rating necessarily because the rating does factor into a few decisions. You, know, you should always play the best move, but sometimes you choose a certain style of position. Right? Sometimes, for example, against a stronger player, I might choose um, maybe like a riskier thing because I want it to get tactical and complicated. Against a lower rated player, I might trade things down, go to end game because I'd expect to win like almost all the time. So, you know, you do kind of make decisions based on, uh, yeah, based on your opponent's rating. Let's see. So we're pretty even right now. I, I think what's happened on the queen side is, uh, is good. You know, we just put some pressure on the pawn. He's defended it. I mean, this is kind of good for me. A3 is, I'd say, a waste of a move, but... It's a slow move. And bishop here, bishop here. I think the bishop would kind of be better placed on e2. So I'm happy with my opening so far. With my position. Knight uh, c4 is a, an incoming move. So that's always uh, available for me. Bishop c5, I could try to get the, the bishop outside the... The pawn chain, so sort of go like here in d6, but I'm actually thinking it's going to be just fine on e7. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Knight c4, also very hard not to play this move, so I am going to play knight c4. And takes, I want to take with the queen. Um, <laughs> but yeah, basically, if I'm, uh, I feel like if I'm playing someone I don't know what level they are, I will be much more inclined to want to trade queens with them. In general, it's tough not to take uh, this knight because as as white you're losing something, right? You're losing something. You have to give up this bishop or this bishop, or you have to move the bishop all the way back. So now I have many options. Um, and I think there's a pretty clear one. So first of all, I have knight takes a three because I could win a pawn there like that. I also have knight takes b two. Problem with knight b2 is that white can throw knight takes b5. Looks a little murky. So I have those ideas. I also have knight takes e3 to just take the bishop off the board. And I'm going to be going with knight e3. I would initially do it because it takes the bishop off, and that's very, very good. But I think there's another reason why I should be doing it as well. And that's what I'm counting on. Knight takes, queen takes, e5. So that knight must move. And then next move, bishop c5, skewering the queen of the king. And there's nowhere the knight can move to prevent that. So the only way that that wouldn't work is something like knight d5 played afterwards. So e5, knight d5. Because then, you know, if I take it, they take with the pawn, and the queen's actually pinning my e-pawn. But I think I take it. Pawn takes. I go bishop c5 anyway. And does that work? I think it works. I'm gonna do it. Um, the nice thing about this is even if it doesn't, I think I think the position is still good for black and, and so principle to take this anyway. So we'll do this. And then uh, we'll see how e5 gets handled because it looks quite tough to face. Mm. Okay, so very difficult move, knight d5, but I think it definitely should have been played. Knight here is going to get into serious trouble after bishop c5. Um, I think that will become apparent right now. So it's knight g7, but it's just the end of the road after king f8. However, I still think that knight d5 played by my opponent last. I think black was winning there. I had a few lines, but I think that's, that's the way to play with white. Hey, what's up, Tov? Absolutely, man. I, I make uh, many decisions, probably too many decisions based on the level of my opponent. So I think some of those are healthy and some of them are unhealthy. It's unhealthy in chess to sort of play the, the rating because you might make a few minutes, you might make a few moves that are like hope chess, where you're like, oh, he's 1200, he won't see it, so I can play this, right? Whereas if they were 1800, you might not do it. If they were GM, you'd never do it. 
And those are the ones that are like bad habits. But it does help to know the level of your opponent because it gives you an idea of what type of positions you might excel in against them. You know, I would pick a different position. Even if it has the same evaluation, I'd pick a different position against the 500 and against the 2000. I wouldn't want to play the exact same one. And that would depend on their rating. Um, let's kick this knight out. Eh, okay, I could also just uh, castle, but I think, I think this is reasonable. He can't go back to e3, which is nice. So knight h6 um, is playable to hit this pawn, but I'd rather have the knight kind of sidelined like that. And knight g7 traps the knight. Knight g3, and let's play h5, going for h4. And I have to say, at this point, whenever the king is locked in there, pushing the h-pawn is often a very good thing to do. Um, trying to get the knight in. So his h4 is actually a um, pretty nice move, I think. So let's see what we're going to do here. There's lots of ways I could handle this. Um, you know, g5 and h4 is like just crazy aggro. So I don't think we're going to go insane like that. I think we're going to be chill and play a nice little d6 move there. That's right, Ralph. That would be bad habits, playing hope chess. But to, to a certain degree, yeah, you do have to... It does help to know the level of your opponent. Let's take with the bishop. All peace trades are good, right? I'm up queen for knight. So anything that I can trade is getting traded. <laughs> yes. And something very important here. Whoa. <laughs> wow. E4. Okay. Didn't expect that. I was going to say, something important after this is to play the move f5. Not let the knight come into e4. Even if I can win a pawn or whatever. Just don't have to deal with it. Um, b4. Interesting. Um, I'll take here. And if pawn takes, once again, I'm going to play, make sure to play f5. Mm, okay. So, some things have been missed here by my opponent. Some things have been missed for sure because uh, that should be played. Knight e3, rook, rook there. I think I'm going to put my knight on f4. Nice, you saw it, it's good. It's, um, I mean, we can play it really slow, kind of principle, bring the king up so we can bring our rook in. Yeah, rook c3. Rook c3 makes the threat of taking the pawn, um, but it's also a pretty easy strategy to just bring all the pieces in. And this is what I was waiting for. So very happy to see that because not only do I get queen for two, or give up a queen, get two rooks, which is a good deal for me in general, but I'm up material. So it's an even better deal. I just get to simplify all white's offensive pieces off the board and this should be quite nice for me. Now, essentially this move, this move, and this move will lead to force mate. And the knight can't move anywhere, right? All these squares are unavailable. So really, he can only make that move. So rook here and rook here should be just checkmate. Knight f1 might get out of it for a move, but it won't get out of it forever. G, G, user unclear. Thanks for the game. <laughs> very, uh, very tricky, not knowing uh, the level of your opponent. I was talking a lot about that during the game. I know you had it muted, but... I think when I saw this move, that gave me an indication of your level a little bit. Um, this move is, I would say, not a good move. Um, definitely not some of the main stuff. And then blundering the bishop uh, c5 thing later on in the middle game was also... Um, another clue, but you, you made your account like a year ago. I'm not sure if you ever answered that, but did you make an account and then just totally give up chess like you're too busy or you forgot you made it or what?
And I guess, have you been playing on any other accounts or anything? Because clearly, the way you play it, you played before. But um, I would say there are some, some pretty serious mistakes um, committed here. Yeah, guess the ELO, right? Guess the ELO. Uh, I would probably say like, I, I would probably say like 700. There were some pretty, pretty um, big mistakes. Like, like essentially the knight just wasn't captured, which, which is not a good sign. That's <laughs> like if a piece just isn't being captured in a legal way by another piece, then I, I think you're already like you can't be higher than seven hundred. The blitz rating is about nine hundred. Is that on chess.com? Yeah, that seems to make some sense. I still think, I still think that not taking a piece is, is not something that should be happening. You should watch habits, dude. <laughs> User unclear. You should watch habits, man. This would never be happening. It's on our YouTube channel, and um, yeah, I I kid you not, buddy. It will be very useful for you. Yeah, well, GG, um, user unclear. I hope that's what you were looking for. You said you wanted to get a game. We got a slow game, 5 plus 5. And I hope you don't uh, find the comments after the game too harsh. Because I think they're pretty honest. And uh, I'm not going to sugarcoat anything. I think, I think some of the mistakes I saw were not befitting of, um, let's say, whatever you said it was, 900 blitz. So habits should help, man. <laughs> Habits will help a lot, especially with the little stuff. Clearly you can play your openings. That's already great. You can play your openings a lot better than probably most people at your rating. But strategically in the middle game, it was just like big blunders. Um, and those are the kind of blunders that are going to cost you full games. You see how quickly things changed from a great opening to completely lost and checkmated in, you know, 10 moves or something. Look at that, 25, uh, 25 more subs, user unclear. 25 more subs, thank you. My god, are we, uh, are we 10k pushing? Or maybe we keep losing as well. So user unclear is uh, really keeping us, uh, keeping us afloat here. I appreciate that a lot. Thank you, that's 50 subs for a game, guys. If anyone, can I block uh, anyone else? Anyone else I can block uh, on chess.com? I've never blocked someone on chess.com. This is my first one. And it turned out to be a great idea.